Okay, welcome to my server rack 2023 part two. On part one, I promised I would get to do part two, hopefully by the end of the year. That was my goal. And I was able to reach that goal as of, you know, a you know, day or two ago. So what I want to do now is show you uh, some of my upgrades that I've done to my server rack in case you're interested, because this might be something uh, you're looking to do on your network. And I want to show how I have the stuff connected, not just show what's there in the rack, but I want to describe how I have everything connected together. So hopefully it'll be a little more detailed than any of my other server rack videos. I want to try to do a little bit of a video behind the rack and show some of the network connections to my servers from behind. So you actually see like how it's actually connected up into my switch and my rack. Uh, it's kind of hard to get back there. The cable management in the back of the rack is a little bit messier than the front. So you don't really see it as much. It's kind of tucked in against the wall there. A quick rundown of what I changed in my server rack. I had three TP link switches. I had two 24 port switches and one eight port switch. One of the 24 port switches was PoE and the other and the eight port switch is also PoE. So what happened is I started off with a 24 port switch because I actually had less than, you know, 24 drops in my house because my basement was not finished, so I didn't have any drops in there when I first moved in. Um, and so 24 port switch was plenty. And then what ended up happening is I wanted some PoE. So I got an eight port switch PoE because I didn't need very many ports. And that was the cheapest kind of TP-Link option at the time that was a managed switch. And then I outgrew the eight port PoE switch, of course. And then, so I got another 24 port switch to get the extra PoE without extra expense, right? So I kind of keep everything budget as friendly as possible. Now that I finished my basement, I added 20 ethernet drops in my basement to five different locations. I have four drops in each location, four are in my office right here. And I did uh, four different locations out in the main big space in my uh, basement. So besides consolidating the three switches, another thing that I did was I added a third patch panel and I moved, I changed the locations of the patch panels because originally I had two patch panels at the top because in my mind, you know, I had to kind of overlap the cables a little bit between the two switches below the two patch panels. Uh, I had to do some overlapping there, which kind of made the cabling a little bit of a mess. I liked having the patch panels at the top because I can actually reach my hands up there so I can move stuff around because it's a modular patch panel. So if I wanted to make some adjustments or add some, you know, cables or different things in there or whatever, it was a lot easier for me to, to deal with. But the top two patch panels that I have up there are mostly uh, drops that are more permanent in my house, like wall drops or exterior runs to you know cameras and stuff like that. Now that I finished my basement, it would be really difficult to replace. Uh, so I ran some of those things ahead of time. What I decided to do is what a lot of people do, especially when you have a 48 port switch, is, is you kind of alternate you know, patch panel, switch, patch panel, switch. Or, or you do patch panel, switch, patch panel, patch panel, switch, right? So you're trying to have a 24 port patch panel for the first top 24 ports of your 48 port switch. The, the bottom 24 ports of the 48 port switch, you can actually you know connect upward. So you connect downward and then you connect upward. So we really short cables and then that makes it nice and neat. And so um, the third patch panel that I added is mostly for devices that are within my rack. Then I'm using inline couplers instead of punch downs. A lot of my other modular um, uh, connections are punch down cables because those are for all my wall jacks and uh, some of my exterior runs and stuff like that that aren't going to be moving around uh, or you know things I don't need to plug in and out like within my server rack. I'm really liking how it's looking compared to how I had it before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show a quick little time lapse and then at the end I'm going to uh, do a, a walkthrough and describe in more detail what all the different connections As we approach the rack, you'll see that I have installed a switch in between my different patch panels. I decided to alternate the patch panels instead of putting them all at the top. So you can see I sandwiched them there because that way I can have the ethernet cables above and below each row of the switch, which makes it really nice and clean, which I like. 
All right, so at the top, you'll see that I have A1 through like B, and then you'll start seeing I have C, A through C, which means um, I have A for the top floor and B for the main floor, and C is my basement, since I have a walk-up basement, so that way I can differentiate all the different floors that I have. And I, as you can see, most of my connections are for my basement. Uh, I have a few, as you can see, that are starting with D. Those are all my exterior runs to my house for my cameras and stuff. And I also started with R for rack, for all the rack mount stuff. So you can see that I have R's in there as well. For the R3, I actually have my tiny pilot for since it's um, PoE, but I have a couple more rooms for other devices that are PoE. But there are all the other stuff down below are non PoE devices since they're connected to my non PoE switch. At the top of the patch pan, you'll see two Ethernet cables that are actually are not connected to the one gig interfaces right here. I actually connected two of them to the 10 gig interfaces using an RJ45 to SFP Plus modules, as you can see. I have one connected to a storage backend and the other is connected to my main network so that I can get greater than one gigabit download speed since my internet provider offers a little bit faster than one gig download. As you can see, I have several DAC cables that wrap around the side of my server rack and it goes down behind my servers down here. It's because I have three servers that are using 10 gig connections, my Proxmox backup server, my Proxmox server, and my TrueNAS server. So my 48 port PoE switch at the top here is actually connected to my other 48 port switch uh, with this DAC cable. And that's the non PoE switch at the bottom. So I just connected these two switches together. And then that bottom switch is connected to my R86S U4, which is used as my OpenSense router right now. And uh, I'll be swapping out for some other hardware in the future. I was using the VP2420, as, but I wanted to use the 10 gigabits on the already success U4. As you can see, I'm using an Ethernet cable on one of the on ETH1, which is my management interface, uh, to my switch above. So my WAN connection is connected to this interface here, and it's connected up to the patch panel, which I labeled WAN, and that's connected with that red Ethernet cable to my cable modem. This unmanaged switch is used for my lab network and I'm connecting it to 10 gigabits except on a separate interface on the RD6S so it can get connected to the network and the internet. This unmanaged switch is connected to this TP-Link switch which is a PoE switch in case I need power over ethernet for any of these devices or wireless access points. I have a connection labeled lab at the top here which I'm using for virtual machines on my Proxmox. It's connected to my Proxmox server 2.5 gigabit ethernet interface connected up to my patch panel, and then that's connected to my unmanaged switch here so that I can actually get 2.5 gigabits on my lab network. Beside the WAN interface, I have four interfaces that I've labeled uh, 1 gig VM 1 through 4 that's connected to my Proxmox system down here, and that I'm planning to use for virtual machines. One thing I'm hoping to do is use these as a backup connection in case my main box goes down and I don't want to have to set up high availability since I only have one public IP address. I can just connect these to the switch and then I can just use that instead of my RDA 6S. The nice thing about these switches having six 10 gig interfaces is that I still have three left over so for future expansion and I shouldn't have to buy another switch for high speed interfaces for a little while hopefully. My last video I moved my home assistant box over to my VP2410 and I'm using three different interfaces to connect to different networks. On the back of my TrueNAS box I'm using uh, the first interface here as my IPMI management and the second interface as my web interface management and this third interface is an extra 2.5 gig interface I'm using to put it on an IoT network for a network share on a, to multi-home my server. And then I have my 10 gig connection for all my high speed devices so they can all be on the same storage backend network. On my Proxmox system, the motherboard interface is my, I'm using as my management interface. And as I move over, I got two 10 gig interfaces, one for a storage backend network and the other is just for the front end app network for all my apps and services. And then as we move in closer, you'll see I have a 2.5 gig interface that I'm using to connect as I showed on the end management switch on my lab network. And then I have four Ethernet interfaces here that I connected up to the rack as well so that I can use them for virtual machines and as a backup connection in case my main router fails. So I hope you find this interesting on how I have things kind of configured in my server rack currently. At some point I'm going to try to maybe diagram things out a little bit and show even more detail because it's hard to discuss it quickly in a short video. So if I had a diagram I can kind of you can kind of see it and study it a little bit more. Um, it's something I've evolved over time. I'm, I'm planning to do a video at some point of 
a history of where I kind of started with, you know, the early days of a single computer going all the way to starting to get into more networking type stuff. And then to my present day, which you guys have seen the last, you know, couple of years, only the last year on YouTube, but last like several years on my website. So until next time, guys, I hope you guys have a great day.